Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to the What If Villager playthrough slash dev series extravagant. I need a better name for this series, don't I? <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit wordy. It's a bit wordy. But guys, I want to thank you so much for all the incredible feedback last episode. I got just way, there was, I think there was about 100,000 comments, give or take a little bit. Uh, but I want to thank you guys so much for all the feedback, all the ideas, all the suggestions and everything and we're taking them to heart today we're gonna we're gonna implement uh two or three of the really good ideas that i liked from the comments um but uh but today so today's gonna be about like i said implementing a couple new features uh going over some of the bugs i i fixed in between episodes which is just gonna always be the case uh but today mostly is gonna be about the farmer okay last episode we made our town hall here we basically just getting started here i made the town hall we had the architect and the tradesmen show up. We talked a lot about nomads and how they visit and everything. Uh, we have our storage room over there, which is going to start getting used today. And we built our first little house here with a little little uh, home structure here. And we have Jacob Paspinall here uh, is our first farmer, a little uh, female farmer here. And we got to get her to work. She's obviously she woke up and she's very confused, doesn't know what to do because there are no farms in the town. So. I think we want to make a farm over there. Okay, so over here on uh, the other side of the storage room, there's a storage building here where I'm starting to make four farms. So uh, we're not going to go anything big here. We will expand them later if we need to. So villagers can farm uh, four different kinds of foods. They can farm, uh, obviously, the wheat. They can farm potatoes, carrots, and beets, and they'll, they'll do all of them in this game. Um, now, obviously, you got to decide what food you want to go with at first. You know, wheat is great because you can convert it into bread, and bread is a great food for villagers. Uh, however, we don't have a we don't have a um, a chef to convert it into bread, so we're gonna start with potatoes here. Uh, the thing I do want to mention though is keep in mind that uh, that whole villager items concept that I uh, initially introduced, I think it was in like the second villager video, uh, that is uh, that is all gone now. So you can actually help your villagers, and I recommend it as you're getting started. Food might be rough, you know. You should definitely start with a farmer, but. Even still, food might be rough in the beginning here, so you can uh, you can go out and kill some cows or whatever you need to do to get some food and put it in the storage chest, and they'll go ahead and eat it just fine. All right, I got my four farm little plots dug out here. I think we're more or less ready to go. The interesting thing now is that we got to get the village to know where the farms are. The village needs to know where the farms are so that the farmers can utilize them. So when the farmer AI says, hey, I'd like to farm some farmland, it asks the village and says, do you know where any farm is? And they'll say, yeah, sure, we got some over there, and they go, blah, 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 you know, so that's what we need to do here now is tell the village where the farms are. So what the village is doing is every frame or every game tick, it's taking a couple random samples of random blocks anywhere in its village. And this is obviously happening very quickly, so it's kind of slowly sampling the entire village, looking for farmland, these blocks right here, okay? And when it finds one, say say the first one it found was right there, okay? What it'll then do is kind of scan out to find adjacent farmland. So it'll scan like all of the four adjacent blocks and then all of those blocks will have their adjacent blocks scanned. Uh, and it'll just keep recursively going that way until it finds uh, the, the bounding box of that farmland. So for instance, in this case, it's going to, once I have all this land tilled out, which we're gonna do in a second here, it's going to stop when it hits these logs because obviously that's not farmland. So when I start doing like this and doing all this guys here, blah, 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 blah. All right, it should very quickly pick up on one of these and do it, do a scan out. And then it's going to say, oh, I see you went from there to there and there to there. So it's going to put a bounding box around all of those and it's going to be the size of this whole area. And I can continue scanning this in here like this. And we should have a farmland now. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take. Sometimes it, Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it actually takes a few minutes, but eventually here, and within a few seconds or a minute, I would say, the farmer, it might actually be longer than a few seconds, the farmer should wake up, um, there's our daily merchants and nomads still looking for a place to go, the farmer here should wake up and go, oh, I see there's farmland out there that could probably be tilled. Is she still over here? What's she doing? Oh, there she goes! <laughs> Good timing! Okay, so there she goes, she's going to work now. Now, there, she has a set of AI modules that we'll talk about in a second, but the one she's doing right now uh, almost definitely is to till the farmland because there is a farm over here that is of decent size, but there are blocks inside it that are not farmland. So she's going to go ahead and till those out. Now, right now, she doesn't need a hoe to do that. I've been, I, quite honestly, I've been on the fence of, you know, 
Should the lumberjack stop working if they don't have an axe? Should the miner stop working if they don't have a pickaxe? That kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm tending to be a little bit on the lenient side. There she goes right now. So yeah, she doesn't actually have that iron, that iron hoe. I could right click on her and see if she's got an, she's got an empty inventory here. Um, but she'll start tilling all these lands here in the middle here with her default pickaxe. I may change that. I may not. So basically my two options for the tools are, oh, she's trying to plant now. There she goes. My two options are to, if they don't have a starting tool, they do not do any work, or I could spawn them in with a default tool, but then also require them. And that tool could eventually break, which is what I think I'm going to lean toward. I think I'm going to make it so that they spawn in with a stone tool. I mean, I say they, I mean the farmer, the lumberjack, the miner, they get a default tool by, de by default. Um, and better tools will just make them work more efficiently is what, is what I think I'm going to go with. And maybe, maybe we'll dabble with that shortly. Uh, but anyways, you can see her, she's continuing to till here. She also did plant. Okay. So let's talk about the planting logic here. So the way it works is it'll sample a block in the farmland uh, region that we just talked about. And if it is farmland and the block above it is air, that means it is ready to be planted. So it'll sample the the four blocks directly adjacent to it. Say it sampled this block, okay? It would sample, um, you know, right there, 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 and there. And if it finds any two blocks that are the same, uh, you know, whether it's wheat, potatoes, uh, carrots, or beets, uh, it'll just go ahead and plant that. So it's looking for basically the common adjacent items to, to kind of continue the trend. So here we're doing all potatoes. She's going to plant all potatoes. If there are not two blocks that have the same type adjacent, then it'll just pick randomly one of them that has any one block. So if there was like uh, potatoes there and carrots there and wheat here, it would be basically random what would go there. But if there was potato there, potato there and carrots here, that would definitely be a potato. Um, obviously, if there's nothing adjacent, like if it samples this block out here, she won't plant any food at all. She'll always she'll always uh, plant adjacent to the existing farmland that is already planted. All right, so I waited here a few more minutes and she's making some progress. Um, and you can see now the interesting thing is she's getting hungry, which is kind of getting scary already. And these are the things I need to balance, right? Is she going to starve before she could make her first food? That would be hard. Her happiness is slowly going down just because anyone who does work during the day, the uh, the happiness goes down. We'll cover all this stuff in a lot more detail right now. You see her, half of her hunger just went down a little bit more there. Um, but here's the thing. Like, I already know that I want a second farmer. So we've got some nomads over here still. And uh, I think I have some emeralds. I think I have like seven emeralds. And I think farmers are three at the current rate. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a second farmer here to double the rate at which we're doing this here. So I'm going to get, uh, we'll just take all seven right now and go to the tradesman and we're going to find the farmer. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. We're going to do this. We're going to do that, this, that, this, put these four emeralds back in there. And let's see, who do we want to be the next, uh, we'll do you. I think we're going to say latent noises here. Uh, now, if I hit like F3B, they're kind of standing on top of each other. But the fact that I'm seeing the, his, oh, I could, maybe I could just separate them. Maybe they're going to try and walk back. The reason these guys are just standing here, by the way, is because there isn't really any villagers in town to walk to. She, they should actually be starting to walk. Now that I think about it, they should be walking over to that farmer over there. Again, that's the wandering AI. We'll, uh, we'll go over all that later. But uh, for now, let's do latent noises. Eh. All right. You are a farmer now. Now, ideally he'll just go. I, I shouldn't have to wait long and he should be moving. Uh, let's get rid of this guy. There he goes. Boom. He's immediately getting to work. So he should go over into the field there and uh, help out our female farmer there and get the ball rolling here to plant that field twice as fast and obviously therefore get food twice as fast. Here he comes. Join in and he should. There he goes. He's just going to start planting now. Excellent. So we have two farmers. So I've kind of jumped around. I talked about planting. I talked about tilling and stuff. What I want to do now is actually go through their different AI modules in detail, starting at the top. All right. So the farmer has five AI modules that are unique to their profession. Now, all, all professions have some base modules like eating and sleeping and stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to cover those kind of sprinkled throughout the episodes. So I don't flood you guys right away. So I'm not going to cover sleeping and eating and everything right now. These are just uh, AI modules that are specific to the farmer. So starting at the top, it's top down priority. So deliver to storage is their topmost priority. And what that means is basically if they have items in their inventory, deliver them to the storage room. Now, this is a module that I think just about every villager has every, any villager who makes something or gathers anything, I think is just about everybody. Uh, well, there's probably some exceptions, but anyway, most of them have delivered to storage. 
Um, and the only thing that varies between them, between the different professions, is what is it they deliver and how much do they deliver. So for the farmers, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, you basically they're going to deliver the things that they collect. That's going to be uh, wheat, uh, beets, carrots, and potatoes. They're also going to deliver seeds to the storage room so that the ranchers can feed the chickens. Uh, and I think there's another thing. Yes, of course, of course, sugar cane, sugar cane. The farmers will also gather sugar cane if you plant it and deliver that so that the librarians can make paper and books and all that stuff. Uh, so deliver to storage, top priority if they have it. Now, one of the things I'm doing with all of the villagers is making their skill really matter. If you guys remember now, they all have a skill. So like latent noises is a level two farmer right now. Uh, Jacob Passmore is a level 7 farmer already, which is pretty good. Those skills go from 0 to 100, or from 1 to 100, uh, and they make a big difference, and I'm trying to make it have even more impact on how well they perform their jobs. So we've got a little bit more progress here, and you can see the nomads are starting to wander around town. They're starting to come over and visit the farmers and things like that. I also started up the second farm over here to keep these guys busy, but uh, some of the potatoes have grown, uh, and what's she doing? Oh, it's nighttime. She's going to bed, right? The night is falling, so... Oh, perfect. Perfect timing. Uh, so night is falling. He should start to head to bed in a second, too. Everyone's schedule is kind of offset a little bit, just to add a lot of randomization and character. Uh, these nomads should also kind of uh, take off any second now and start... There they go, I think. They're, they're going to wander back to where they came from and then despawn. And then we may get lucky and get new ones tomorrow, and uh, we may not. So one farmer out there is going, this guy should be going, yeah, there he goes. He's going to head back to his bed now, and we're going to sleep the night away. And rise and shine, it's a brand new day, he gets a little bit of happiness. Again, we'll cover sleeping and all the details then. Uh, but he's going to go back to work and get to farming. Okay, next AI up is planting farm. Ooh, the farm, he just gained a little skill level there. What level is it? Oh, he's up to level 7. What's she up to? Level 11. They're doing good. Uh, so next up is plant farm. I think I mostly covered this one. They basically look for farmland. Like, this is a plantable farmland right here. It evaluates the adjacent crops, blah, blah, blah. Just like I was mentioning before. After that is till, which is what they're doing. Oh, hey, merchant. How's it going? We got we to gotta deal with this guy soon. I got to start making some emeralds back here. Um, and we'll talk about him in a bit. I don't know if we'll get to him this episode or not. I think we're going to focus on farmer, but probably next episode we're going to start having some, uh, product to sell because this is how we get emeralds back. Uh, but anyways, tilling farmland, pretty self-explanatory. They just look for a grass or dirt patch that has air above it, etc. Um, within the bounds of the farmland, and they'll go over and try to till that. Now, the uh, the time it takes to plant and till is, again, very heavily dependent on their skill. So the better you are, the faster you will till, and the faster, the less animations it'll have to play to till the land and to plant seeds. All right, check it out, check it out. I want to show you guys a new feature that I put in yesterday. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I wasn't quite sure the right way to do it. Uh, and then I got some comments saying I should also do something like it, but check it out. The structure markers now, notice the structure marker looks kind of like it's enchanted. It has the enchanted glowing effect on it. So now all structure markers, as soon as they become valid, meaning that they are representing a valid structure, they get the enchanted effect placed on them. So if I put something up there, uh, let's see, we could actually, well, you know what, I'm going to, in a little bit, we're going to cover all of the structure scanning rules and everything and what it takes to make a building and all that stuff, because there were a lot of questions about that. Um, so we're going to cover that in a second, and that's when you'll really see this effect uh, really shine. No pun intended. Okay, maybe a little bit. All right, while these two are getting busy finishing off that second farmland, I want to plant some sugar cane. So got a little bit of water hidden behind these these uh, blocks here. Put some dirt down, and we're going to sugar cane this up here now. Uh, now, farmers will uh, they'll find the sugar cane. They won't find it. The village will... Wow, that was, oh, I thought she was going over to her already. Um, basically, the sugar cane is just like the farmland. The village as a whole... Uh, at, a, at a fairly consistent but slow rate, we'll be scanning all the blocks for sugarcane. Uh, and when it finds one, it'll remember that location and then monitor it. And if it gets above, uh, I think it's three high, uh, it'll basically signal the farmer and say, hey, I got sugarcane over here. And the farmer AI for gathering sugarcane will go over, punch it, and deliver it to the uh, deliver it to the storage. Pretty straightforward. Uh, take a pass, but all. I, th I think we met your brother here. <laughs> The Novad came with the same last name as our farmer. She's like, Amory? <gasps> Jacob? Is that you? <laughs> 
Awkward. Okay, on to the last AI, the most important one, harvesting the farm, okay? Once we're done with this one, we're going to hop into the test world, and uh, we're going to talk about structure generation stuff. But for harvesting a farm, uh, skill matters, okay? Skill of the farmer makes a big difference here. So the way it works is it's only going to find crops of the four types. Here's one right here that is at the max age. So the potato obviously right there is ready for harvesting. Now, uh, as I was saying, skill matters. Um, the more skill the farmer has, the less animations they have to play. So the less times they have to bend down and pick up. So it makes a big difference in saving time. Um, and even more importantly than that, uh, when a farmer is harvesting the, the farmland, there is a chance that we'll probably see it right here on this guy because his skill's not so hot. Um, he should, like, bend over four times, I think. Three, four. Yeah, and it pops. Okay, so see, he ruined the soil there. So the chance of that happening is based directly on his skill. When you're at a, you know, a level one skill or a crappy skill like he's got, it's pretty much a 50-50. So it's, it's going to happen quite a bit. But then once you get up to, like, a level 100... Uh, it's only like a 10% chance, so it, it falls off very, very sharply. Uh, so skill. Skill makes all the difference. All right, we are here in the creative test world now, and I want to show you guys a little bit about structures, how they're scanned, how they're formed, the limitations, what makes a legal structure, and what doesn't. So here we are. We're going to start off with the most basic uh, structures. You guys remember last episode I talked about where you can put the... Uh, the item frames to put your your structure token inside this right here is the most minimal structure you're going to find here okay every building needs to have at least eight squares interior this one has uh nine as you can see a three by three and the ceiling must be at least two blocks tall it must be two walkable blocks with it with no collision in there so uh in this case like the torch and stuff is fine uh like uh i'm trying to think what else like a, maybe an open fence gate would count i guess that that's the thing uh, but basically, you just want to have air blocked all inside. So this is a legit house. Pretty straightforward. We're going to put our town hall in there. And you can see how it immediately starts to glow. It recognized that it was a legit town hall. And our little friend should show up now-ish. Soon. Very soon. There they are. Okay. So we have our town hall. From here on out, we're going to make some houses. So when scanning the inside of a building, the only thing that really matters is the ceiling. You actually don't even really need the wall. So let's go ahead and make this into a home. And you'll see it's a legit home, which doesn't really look like it should be. Because again, it doesn't have walls, but I wanted to have a no wall option. Uh, a lot of people were requesting things like blacksmiths have open sides and everything. And I think that's important for a little bit of freedom of building. So it's really just about the roof here. Okay, so the way the scan works is it starts on the first block inside the door, okay? Um, pretty much, you know, the opposite side that the item frame is is on there. So it's gonna scan that block. And then recursively for each block after that, it's gonna scan all of its adjacent neighbors, okay? And every neighbor and every block it scans that has a solid block above its head, somewhere between, uh, you know, with, with at least two air blocks in between and up to 15 air blocks in between, that would then be a legit square, okay? It would then scan this one, but there's nothing above there. There's no ceiling up there or anything, so it's not going to count that one, okay? Uh, it's not going to be able to scan this one right there because there's a block under it. This one here is an air block, but it's not It's not two blocks. That one doesn't count. So it's going to keep scanning, scanning, scanning. All of these are legit right there, okay? This one here is legit because there's a block above it that would be considered a ceiling, uh, and there's two air blocks in between now. As soon as it gets back here, these are all going to fail because there's no you know, there's no, uh, there's no, ceiling back here, of course. So that is your floor plan right there, is the floor plan you would have for that building. And over here we have basically the most simple building you could have, the most simple structure you can have. You'll see that one registers as a legit home. However, if I cut off, we'll see, there's what, there's nine there. If I cut off two of these... It should devalue this because uh, it won't have enough floor spaces. The update tick is a little bit, a uh, little bit sporadic in between, so it might take a little bit to. to there it goes right there. So it just deregisters like, hey, this is no longer a legit home. Uh, but then if I just put those right back, boom, it comes right back again. So you can see the limitation there. Um, again, ceiling. Uh, two blocks tall. Now, eventually, I'm going to have, uh, especially when we get into like spending time in your home at night. Taller ceilings will help the villagers. So you don't want to build a minimalistic house. You want to build a good size house. The more floor space inside a house, 
and the taller the ceilings, the happier your villagers are going to be. But we'll get into all that much later. Now, this right here, of course, is just a very crazy example. Just again, showing you different uh, ways you can make a house. I mean, this is obviously not something you'd ever want to make, but you'll see this is a legit house. Again, because when you look down on it, there's like 12 or 13 blocks there that are legit uh, ceiling coverage. Um, again, you don't need the walls. It starts scanning inside the door. So that would be the first one right there. So this floor plan is, let's see, probably we'll go a couple more right there. I think like that and like that, I think. Yeah, that looks like the floor plan for that house. Interesting stuff. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff where I was starting to get a lot of questions. This right here is a, a kind of a double building that has many doors into it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna we're gonna tag this guy. He's a legit home. Walk inside here. Everything's good. You can see it has multiple doors. That's fine. Villagers will use whatever door. They don't care where the token is in terms of pathfinding. They'll take whatever's shortest and use that path. So uh, multiple doors into a building are are actually encouraged. Um, you can see we even have a door inside to another door here or into another room. That's totally fine too. Okay. So if we wanted to, we can come out here. Where is it? Uh, we had another item frame here. I can put a, a home there. So now what we have is essentially two homes joined together and they are separate and distinct. Okay. This is one home here with the space and going into here. Now I'm in the, I'm in the first home. If I wanted to, I could even break this guy down here. Okay. And we can have a home inside a home. I could even put like this up here and put another home there. And bam, that one's perfectly fine. So we've got a home that you have to walk through to get to the second home, if that makes sense. I mean, just to show you what kind of things you can do. And then of course we have this monstrosity here. I was getting a lot of questions on this. Can you have multi-floor structures? The answer is yes, for the most part, okay? There is one limitation with all structures and it's one I'm, I want to fix eventually. I know I could, I just don't know if I have the time for it, honestly. But right now the limitation is the interior of a building has to be all perfectly flat. You can't have you can't have steps up to a second kind of level or anything like that. It has to like be all level with this, uh, you know, with the bottom of the door at this level here. And I would recommend not putting actual carpet and stuff. That seems to cause problems right now too. But again, that's on the list of things I want to fix. Uh, but this, you can see, this is a legit building right here, okay, as it glows. The villagers then, they do know how to go upstairs. So if we want, we can actually make this a, a home as well. And you can see I have a nice little overlook and everything. Totally fine. I could put glass there or just leave open air. This is a legit home and the villagers will go up there to go sleep at night. And then I even have a third one up here. I can make this a legit building, legit home. Come inside here again with a nice overlook. I mean, again, I don't even really need this here um, because again, it's just it's just looking for the the sky coverage you know do i have a ceiling above me or at all so that building would end right there so there you go those are the rules for scanning and creating structures and how they're formed and the rules on what makes a legit structure so hopefully that will clear up any questions you have if you have more of course just leave a question and i will try to answer it in the uh, in the comments there so uh there you go Okay, back over in our village now, I have one more really interesting feature. It's kind of a big change, and it is directly because of the comments you guys left last video, and I really appreciate it. So, I we kind of were talking about houses and stuff like that, and how many beds you can put in, and a lot of people had the question of, well, why don't I just make why, buy one house token and put 75 beds in the house and be done with it? And as of right now, yeah, you could have done that. My plans were to make the, uh, make the houses actually be have the size of the house affect the villager inside. So when a villager wakes up in the morning, they gain a certain amount of happiness, like a good chunk of happiness back. I was gonna have that value be reflected in the size of the house and how many beds and stuff like that. And I think I'm still gonna do that, but I also went ahead and made a change here that uh, I think I think everyone will like. It's kind of interesting. So instead of just house tokens now, now we have house tokens that have a limit on how many beds you can put in the house. So we have a, a house two, a house four, and a house six. And you can see the prices now are, so the house two is cheaper, it's only six. The house four is 13, and the house six is 20. So you can see it gets, it gets a little bit more expensive to get the bigger ones, because that's the one I think people are gonna want. Uh, so yeah, we got a two, four, and six now, and you'll see over here, I already put a two on it. Where is it? Right here. I like the way the numbers show up and everything. So we got a house two here, only supports two beds. Uh, and I want to show you something. I'm going to pop back over to the creative world and show you how this works. 
Yeah, so I did something that I think is pretty interesting. Some people may not like it here, but I think it's pretty clever. So uh, we've got our little village here. I have a town hall down there. We're going to go ahead and actually let me put some beds in here first, right? This is just going to be a pretend home right now. We're doing, we're doing a little science here, okay? We're going to say we've got six beds in this house, okay? Let's go ahead now and turn this to a, a home two, which means it only supports up to two beds inside it. So there we go, two beds. Now they all immediately turn red, but watch, boom, two of them, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Two of them turn yellow there. So what that means is there's three colors for a bed now. There's red, which means psh, we ain't got time for this bed, you're cheating. This bed is not allowed in this house. Yellow, which means this bed is available and unclaimed by a resident. And then there's green, which is, this bed is claimed by a resident. And if we wait a second here, she should claim a bed. There we go, bam. So we have one bed claimed now by uh, by by one resident, but it's a house too. So this is also a valid bed ready to go here. I can, uh, if we break that one, the room will rescan. Boom, now that one becomes available. Boom, the room will rescan. So it's, it scans like every, every few seconds, just to update and make sure it has an accurate count. I can even break that bed and the villager will go, oh, hold on. There's two now available, I'll claim that one instead. Very interesting stuff here. Um, but now I can even add like more beds, wait for it, like this, okay? And now they're gonna go, we only, uh, still, two yellows, and the beds get reclaimed by the villager. Do it, and how about now? No, be good. <laughs> Maybe that's a bug. Maybe she's not rescanning. Okay, I'll have to look into that one. Um, you know what, you know what, I'm sorry, but I need, I need a new resident. Okay, you didn't make it. Good. So we got two of those. Now here, check this out. Now I'm going to turn into like a house six now. Boom. Okay, now all of them should turn... They're all red first because it, the old building went away. The old structure went away. And now we should get a rescan. Okay, there we go. Turned them all yellow. So now I can even go add one more and it should turn that one yellow. Good. If I add another one, this one will not turn yellow. Well, it kind of rescans them, but uh, that one turns red over there. And now I can start adding some... some uh, some villagers in here and they should start claiming the beds green 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 that's awesome so four of the beds oh wait why five of the beds oh i did i added five okay there's two people there so you can see how that works i kind of like it the people who don't like it are going to be the ones that really want to control the color of their beds but i think this is a pretty clean way of showing the status of a house. If you have too many beds, how many people are living in the house, what beds are taken, pretty good stuff. All right, that is gonna do it for today, guys. If you have any questions on the farmer, uh, any details about their AI, how they work, how they live their lives, please leave a comment and I'll try to uh, answer. But we're not done. I, I mean, I guarantee we'll be making more changes to the farmer as we go. We also made some changes to housing today, which I thought was really good. We put in the glowing structure marker and a couple other things. And I think we made some good progress here. Uh, so next episode, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Do you want to see the miner? Do you want to see the lumberjack? Or do you want to see the rancher? Those are the three that I think I'm willing to do next. So leave a comment. Let me know which one you want next. Uh, and again, questions, comments, feedback are really encouraged. That is the that is the life and blood of this series, and it's what we're going to need to move on. So give me your thoughts, guys. And uh, until next time, I'll see you then.